are minimalists. Would you say it is intentionality or vanity if one chooses to look for specific characteristics in a partner, such as height, hair color, or other physical traits, to provide an attraction? As a person who enjoys the act of sex and the intimacy that sex provides, it is important to me that my partner's beliefs about intimacy align with my own beliefs. A relationship lacking intimacy simply won't be fulfilling for me. But to me, there is a physical component to attraction, and it will be difficult for me to be intimate with a partner I'm not attracted to physically on some level. And yet we're often told that looks don't matter, it's what's inside that counts. This makes me feel guilty for initially choosing partners based on who I have a sexual attraction to. All this seems possible if I follow this age-old advice, I may end up feeling unfulfilled. I'm old enough to know that a person's physical characteristics are not everything in a relationship, but can it be a factor in the equation and get things started? Or must we all be social pariahs for having a preference? So, so Chris, I mean, I think it has to be part of the equation. I mean, unless you're asexual, um, which is definitely a thing, but but if you want to be in an intimate relationship with someone, having a an attraction, now what our attraction strategy is is different for each of us. Can you talk a little bit about uh, about Jerome's question here? Yeah, <clears throat> I think I think a mistake that people often make is conflating attraction with um, uh, compatibility mm. in a long term relationship. Right. I think it's important to disentangle those and sort of think about them as separate issues, mm. um, because physical attraction, as Jerome said, can sort of get it started, uh, can draw you to someone. The chemistry. Yeah, but often chemistry is the result of psychological incompatibility, right? I think a lot of times what we do in relationships is we choose a partner who will um, – sort of draw us toward issues that we have trouble with. And so that can be a source of growth because you're drawn to these issues that you're troubled by and you can work through them, you maybe. You them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or you just keep banging your head against them and you yeah. have one of these like dramatic but crazy relationships sure. uh, that a lot of people get into, which can be sexually really fulfilling. Mm. Right. The makeup yeah. sex can be amazing. All the yelling and screaming and breaking things can get really hot if you're, you know, that kind of person. Yeah. Um, but I think that it's important to sort of disentangle those things because the attraction will fade over time as you become family. Mm-hmm. You know, you you live with someone for 10 years. They become a sibling. Right. I don't uh, care how hot they are. Yeah. Right. The, the, as the level of familiarity increases, the 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 level of physical chemistry often decreases. Right. And and again, that's one of those things that people often blame themselves for or think that you know, they're told that there's something wrong with their relationship because every month Cosmo has 10 more tricks for keeping it hot in bed forever. You know, <laughs> yeah. It's a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. So um, there's a book called The Erotic Mind by a guy named Jack Morin. And um, I read it a long time ago, but the thing I remember is, is he says this very simple formula. He says, attraction plus an obstacle equals passion. Mm. And so you think about every relationship, every love story, Romeo and Juliet or whatever, there's that initial attraction and then there's a problem. There's a reason they can't get there, right? The families won't let him or it's a long distance thing or she's already married or it's two dudes and they're gay and they can't tell anyone or whatever it is, there's always some obstacle. And so the the um, attraction keeps building and building to try to overcome that obstacle. But once we remove the obstacle, you get together, there's no obstacle anymore, the passion diminishes. Mm. And so it's weird, it's like, what are we trying to do? You meet somebody you're really into, you wanna be with them all the time, yeah. right? So you're sabotaging your own passion. Yeah. It's interesting. but. Yeah. Anyway, to get to his point, I, I think it's really important to separate those things. So there's nothing wrong with saying, look, I'm only I'm really attracted to like, you know, short blondes with, you know, big knees or something. But don't mistake that for compatibility. Right. So you might find the perfect short blonde with big knees and that doesn't mean that you guys are good together. Right. It yeah. just means you like looking at pictures of her. Right. Yeah. I, I think that that 
uh, if I were to sum up what you're saying there is is looks do matter in terms of attraction, but in terms of long term compatibility, maybe something like values matter. You know, if if you have radically opposing values and beliefs, even though you might be really attracted to each other sexually, right? Yeah, you might have a great sexual encounter. But, but in terms of looking for a long-term relationship, that thing's going to fall apart. And, and even worse, you're probably going to stick it out longer because of that, the, well, the passion that you've just described and there. And you might have kids, and by the time you figure out that you're not a good match for each other, there are other innocent people involved now. Yeah. That's the real tragedy, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's fine. Have yeah. a good time. You're attracted to a certain type of person physically. Have a good time, but don't mistake that for partnership for compatibility and don't start try to start a family with somebody because you like the way she looks or he looks yeah also you might have a type right like like you might have a, a type that you're attracted to but that doesn't mean that's the only type of person you're attracted to as well i mean i, I think of bex my partner wh whom you met when we were out at your house in, in topanga um and she is not my type at all um, but like in terms of like what I would traditionally date, you know, I, I used to date shorter women and Bex is you know, tall. She's almost my height. Um, and, um, she has darker hair than what I would date no normally. And so like, there are all these things where you're like, well, if I were to, to uh, just pick what is my type, it would unlikely be her. Um, however, I'm still wildly attracted to her. Um, not in spite of, of her, her physical look, she looks gorgeous, but realizing like there can be a whole spectrum of, sure. of, of attractiveness as well. I don't have to just have the, the short blonde with the big knees. Um, you, you <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm allowed to say. Yeah. This podcast. <laughs> you, I mean, you can say whatever you want. You say whatever you want. Man. <laughs> yeah. and, and so I, what, what I realized though with her is, is the thing that keeps me attracted is the fact that we do share so many similarities outside of, uh, uh we, we Yes, we're attracted physically, but everything else beyond that sort of aids the physical sure. attraction. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's part of maturity, too. I mean, I don't know how old this dude is, but I mean, a lot of guys, you know, 20, 22, 23, 24, like they're very focused on the visual, mm -hmm. you know, and that's fine. You know, experience those things, but don't don't, uh, you know, get yourself into a situation that is going to have long term implications for for other people. Then when you're in your 30s, maybe you will have matured enough to be like, hey, OK, I've been there. I've done that. <laughs> now I'm looking a little under the surface. I've had the you short know? blonde with the big knees. Yeah. Yeah. I've been down that road. I, th I think it's cr I think it's crazy to say that looks don't matter. Like, I, you know, you hear that um, kind of propagated. It sounds virtuous. It, it does. On the surface, you're yeah. Like, I'm am, I am not shallow at all. Right. right. Yeah. But they matter for some things and not for others. Right. And oh, that's a great way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there there is something to be said about how we've evolved up to this point too, about how uh, these characteristics that we look for it it is um, almost a survival mechanism in a lot of ways. So you know, I, I think for that for that aspect, like it's kind of. Um, well, it's it, it, the cards are not stacked for us. I mean, they're stacked against us when it comes to looks don't matter. Like looks absolutely matter. It's I think it's programmed into our in our, into our DNA. I love what you said about um, the uh, uh, love plus an obstacle equals passion. Attraction. Attraction. Yeah. Attraction plus obstacle. Yeah. <clears throat> it's it's like almost. Um, kind of reiterates or affirms that whole thing of, you know, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Mm. And uh, looking at that specifically with sex, I mean, it totally makes sense. So when you get into a relationship where maybe you are attracted to the person, drop dead gorgeous, 10 years uh, pass, and you get to this point where, yes, you're comfortable, m maybe you're not as, you know, sexually attracted because of that familiarity thing that we were talking about. Um, maybe, you know, to get over that hump, it is, it's about... Um, putting in some type of obstacle or putting in some type of uh, of excitement. Um, I haven't got to that point with Mariah yet, but it's interesting because if that's the equation for passion, then there are, I feel like there are ways that people who've been in relationships for 20 years, they can find a way to maybe make an obstacle or make something to, yeah. to create more passion in the relationship. Vacation separately. Yeah, you know, I, interesting. Miss, miss a, each other. That is an interesting concept. Well, it's, it's like intermittent fasting, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, it's the same sort of thing. It's like you want to appreciate your food more, be hungry. 